Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Process Analysis, Lecture A. The objectives for this lecture are to describe the purpose of process analysis, describe skills and knowledge necessary for process analysis, and perform a process analysis for a given clinic scenario. In this lecture, we will focus on common process variations and exceptions in the clinic, including objectives of process analysis, relevant concepts for process analysis, steps for process analysis, starting with process inventory and diagrams, for each process, listing variations applicable to the clinic, exceptions, and reporting findings. Healthcare is comprised of individuals working in processes. As W. Edwards Deming stated, you can only elevate individual performance by elevating that of the entire system. Deming, 1982. Paraphrasing this quote, the way to consistently improve the performance of individuals is to improve the system or process. Process analysis is a way to examine a process and identify these opportunities for improvement. There are different ways to analyze processes. Often the methods concentrate on one or more process aspects. The process analysis methodology covered in this unit focuses on identifying processes in use at a clinic and translating information about the processes into a list of electronic medical record functions that are needed at that clinic. The purpose of this type of process analysis is to make the best match possible between an EMR and a clinic and to optimally leverage health information technology to improve patient care. Before we start, and in a way as an introduction, we will cover the following definitions. Process, process analysis, and process improvement. Merriam-Webster defines process as a series of actions or operations conducing to an end, especially a continuous operation or treatment. Similarly, the American Society for Quality defines process as a set of interrelated work activities characterized by a set of specific inputs and value-added tasks that make up a procedure for a set of specific outputs. Process, ND. The word procedure is related to process. ASQ defines a procedure as the steps in a process and how these steps are to be performed for the process to fulfill a customer's requirements, usually documented. Procedure, ND. Important characteristics of processes for our work are that processes have 1. Sequence or order. 2. Steps, also called activities, actions, operations, or tasks. 3. Inputs and outputs. And 4. Happen over and over, i.e. are ongoing. For example, appointment scheduling is a common process in healthcare facilities. Merriam-Webster provides several definitions for the word analysis. The one most relevant for our work here is an examination of a complex process, its elements and their relations, or a statement of such analysis. Analysis, ND. So a process analysis is an examination of a process to understand its elements, such as steps and actions, and the relationships between them, including the order of steps, what things can be done in parallel versus sequentially, who or what performs the steps, and maybe where they are performed. However, because the goal of our analysis is to ultimately improve a process, we also look for things like gaps, lack of conformity with best practice, undue delays, redundancy, rework, and lack of efficiency. For us, the combination of understanding process elements and the relationships between them and identification of opportunities for improvement comprise process analysis. If we define a process as a continuous series of actions or operations conducing to an end, then process improvement is making changes to a process to make it better in some way. In healthcare, the Institute of Medicine listed six areas or goals for healthcare quality improvement. These are that healthcare should be safe, effective, efficient, timely, patient centered, and equitable. 
We improve processes by analyzing them and identifying things that could be made better. DeMarco further outlines process analysis skills helpful to overcome the challenges inherent in process analysis. These are knowledge of data and data system concepts, knowledge of clinical workflow concepts, and the ability to communicate these concepts. We added the ability to identify problem areas. There are many different methods of analyzing processes, and they have been contributed from different fields, including business, quality improvement, industrial engineering, cognitive science, computer science, and informatics. It is impossible to review all of the perspectives and methods in this unit. We take a very pragmatic approach in the framework presented here. Our approach is based on forming an objective picture of clinic processes, process variations, and exceptions, and translating information about the processes into a list of electronic medical record EMR functions that are needed at that clinic. The purpose of this type of process analysis is to make the best match possible between an EMR and a clinic, and to optimally leverage health information technology to improve patient care. The unit on process redesign focuses on how to identify areas for improvement and ways to change clinic processes to improve health care. Like process diagrams, process analysis can occur at different levels. A detailed process analysis examines each process, usually using a process diagram, and looks for clues to inefficiency, redundancy, or opportunity for error. An analysis at this level might also collect some data about how the process operates. For example, time from patient check-in to time seen by the provider, as well as interview practice providers and staff to understand their perceptions of opportunities for improvement. While this level of detail in process analysis is often necessary to troubleshoot problems, it is not routinely necessary for the task of identifying an EHR that is a good match for a particular clinic. For this, we recommend a less detailed approach. By less detailed, we mean identifying the major things that, based on a clinic's core functions, the EHR needs to do and understanding how the clinic does each. We adopt the less detailed approach here. Start with process inventory and process diagrams, covered in Units 2 and 3. These should provide a context diagram showing clinic functions and a flowchart for each process. For each process, list the process variations applicable to the clinic, as well as exceptions that often occur. For example, for a patient visit, a common exception would be that a patient cancels or does not show up. The last step in process analysis is report findings. The findings from a process analysis would include major observations, a list of EHR functionality necessary to support clinic functions, and opportunities for improvement, technology-assisted and otherwise. A separate unit mentioned identification of major processes in use at a healthcare facility. After the processes are listed, the analyst works with leadership at the healthcare facility to identify those that are of high priority for analysis and improvement. All of the processes can't be assessed. Some can't feasibly be improved with the available resources. For others, the game would be too small to make the effort worthwhile. Still others can be improved, but by means other than use of health IT. After the processes for analysis have been identified, the analyst, working with people from the clinic, creates diagrams of the processes. These graphical representations of the processes are used in the process analysis and redesign. We start with the process inventory and diagrams because sometimes they are all that is needed, and they point to areas where different types of objective information may be needed. A separate unit covers creating process diagrams. This unit assumes that students are familiar with at least one method of creating a graphical representation of a process, for example, a flowchart. Practices have a set of core functions. Some functions are performed by most practices, like billing, prescription writing, office visits, and referrals. Other functions vary according to the type of practice. For example, a small practice may draw blood, but may not perform any lab tests. 
while large practices may have equipment to perform common blood and urine-based lab tests. The lab tests, other diagnostic tests, and procedures vary by practice size and by specialty. The first step in process analysis is understanding the main processes that are performed by a practice. A context diagram, like the one on this slide, should always be created to make sure the analyst and clinic staff working with the analyst are aware of the main tasks that a clinic performs. As a context diagram, the depiction is purposely at a very high level, has less than 20 or 30 boxes, and usually fits on one page of paper. The purpose of this diagram is to understand the whole. A diagram like this shows areas where data exchange is needed and depicts the main processes at a clinic or other healthcare facility. Recall from Unit 4 that a process inventory is a list of the main processes used by a practice. If there are more than 20 or 30 processes on your inventory for a practice, you may be working at too detailed a level. If the practice consists of multiple specialties, you will have a larger number of processes on the inventory, and the analysis will take longer. For each process, the main activities, roles, locations, flow, and information needs are identified, either in writing or by process diagrams as described in other units. These steps are preparatory to process analysis and are covered in separate units. Additional detail that we alluded to in Unit 4 is needed for process analysis. An inventory should also specify which of the common process variations are in use at the practice. For example, virtually all practices need to obtain biological samples and have the samples analyzed. However, how and where the lab samples are processed varies among clinics. The common variations are all lab tests are processed and analyzed at the clinic. Blood is drawn at the clinic, but samples are sent to a central lab for processing, or some of both 1 and 2, depending on the type of sample and the tests that are needed on the sample. The workflow, data flow, and information needs for each of these variations differs. In the following scenario, which of the following process variations are used? P.A. James tells patient Paul that there is an unusually high number of strep cases in the community over the past month and that based on the appearance of his throat, he may have strep throat, and that he would like to swab his throat and do a rapid strep test. Patient Paul agrees. P.A. James swabs his throat with a long cotton tip swab and does the test. Five minutes later, P.A. James returns and tells patient Paul that the test was positive. In this scenario for the rapid strep test, the practice is obtaining the sample, a throat swab, and performing the test in the clinic. Importantly, most clinics will use multiple process variations. The occurrence of multiple variations is a signal to the analyst that 1. the EHR must support multiple options and 2. that there are criteria for making the decision on which variation is used and that the EHR will likely need to show different screens or otherwise facilitate the process variance based on the criterion. Process choices, sometimes called branches, indicate important functionality needed in an EHR. Process variations are processes used by the clinic, i.e., the way a particular clinic does something, the clinic's process. They are called variations because they vary from clinic to clinic. For example, some clinics only schedule appointments by phone, while others use online scheduling or both online and phone. There should be a process diagram for the variation or variations used by the clinic. Process exceptions are errors or common odd things that happen during the clinic's processes. Things like a lab sample goes bad or a patient has to leave the appointment early. You will most likely not have the time and resources to create process diagrams that include exceptions. They are important to note because EHR functionality needs to cover expected exceptions and needs to have a generic way to handle the unexpected. In Lecture B, we will list common process variations and exceptions for processes used by most clinics. This concludes Lecture A of Process Analysis. At this point, you should be able to understand relevant concepts and steps for process analysis starting with process inventory and diagrams, 
understand the concept of variations and exceptions for each process listing and to know how to report findings. Understand the concepts of variations and exceptions for each process listing and know how to report findings.